What's up guys, it's Danny from Dan's Reptiles and in this video I'll be showing you how to set up an outdoor blue tongue skink enclosure. So, never actually done an outdoor blue tongue skink enclosure before. So this is Maxine Maximus, my gigantic Queensland locality Eastern. She currently weighs about a kilo and she's 56 centimetres long. Big, big blue tongue as you guys can see. Trying to hide is Whitey, my albino eastern blue tongue skink. So he lives outside full time as well. And this enclosure also houses a third skink, who is Dwayne, my uh, get him out of his hidey hole shingleback skink. So these three share it together 24 7, 365. And I'll talk about how this enclosure is, how it was built. So it's all made out of pine sleepers, just pieces of timber there. Got mesh as the doors. I'll take this off for you guys so you guys can get a better look. So the specs of the enclosure, it's three meters long, one meter wide. It's got three doors, all hinged up, all stapled mesh. Just got this piece of timber so they can hold the doors. And this enclosure is actually in the ground as well as you can see these support beams they're in the ground substrate is wood chips with rubber underneath so they can't get under but they've done a good job with a little gap that i had so i decided to leave it and they have burrows we'll get to that in a minute so first off when keeping blue tongues outside as well as any other reptile you got to think of the heat uv rays you got to think of the weather rain you got to think of when they're going to brumate or hibernate so i'll start with the weather first so first off, you obviously got to have several spots so they can get to their natural UV rays. As you can see, I've got two meters of wherever they go, they'll be hit with sun and UV rays. Got to think of their basking spots. Big rock here, so it's currently seven o'clock and it's still fairly warm. So that gets nice and hot during the day. Got several roof tiles where they can get under, get that nice heat, as well as bask on top. Color bond with two timbers so it stays upright. As you can see there, a nice height underneath. The this is also very overgrown, so it will be cut soon. But this is where they like to hide as well. It stays nice and cool underneath all this thick weed, grass type stuff. Then you've got your cold hides, which also is all tarped up for this one, so that keeps all the sun out. So it's nice and cool here. Big water dish. Just got yeah, out of, some outer logs. Got some built hide that I built there out of a pot. Big water dish, big food dish. These guys eat dog food, salad, insects, you name it, they pretty much eat everything. Shinglebacks are more commonly known to have more salad than dog food compared to the blue tongue skink. Did, what? Did the big girl already run into her hide? I can't remember where she went. <sighs> but, yeah, so, and then you got to think of the rain. So shinglebacks, in regards to the rain, I usually bring Dwayne in if it's heavy rain for days because shinglebacks are more prone to get sick than blue tongues. Blue tongues, they're pretty strong animals, very strong actually. So when it rains, obviously you've got the tarp here to cover up the rain, so this stays completely dry. And also they've got several hides in the burrow to go into. So it stays completely dry so they don't get soaked all day. And obviously that comes down to the same as when it gets too hot, they go in there so it's nice and cool. But yeah, so you can now think of brumation. So when it comes to that time of year when it starts cooling down, the lizards start slowing down to eat, they'll want to look for a place to hide brumate. The, their burrows are already self-made, so they'll just chill in here non-stop for several weeks, if not months. But I'll also stay and move this stuff, and I'll put a hay box here, just in case they want to stay warm in there. So I just made out of a plastic tub and just put hay, sugarcane mulch, stuff like that. Keep them nice and warm in there and nice and dry. And if they ever want to come out, I always have food there for him. Is Maxine under here or Maximus under here? Where did she go? There's two. Where'd the third go? Where did the third go? Where did you go? <sighs> I cannot seem to find the biggest lizard. There she is. Hiding right there. You can see a tail just there. Alright, all good. I've made a video on how to build this, so if you guys want to check that, just scroll through my videos and you'll find it. 
But yeah, so keeping lizards outdoor, very simple, just depending on where you're from. So obviously you're from a place that's nothing but rain, very high humidity with the rain and all that, like, so like always cold, heavy rainfall, storms and all that. This w wouldn't be really for you, but it, obviously you get your normal storms and all that here, but blue tongues love the heat, they love the humidity. They're very active species when they're outside compared to indoors. Indoors you see them just sloping around, but outdoors, tell you what, this big lizard, considering she weighs a kilo and she's 50 something centimeters, she's a very fast blue tongue skink. She's a very active one. As you guys can see, I'll get her out here. I'll show you her run. She's very active. The reason why you can tell with the Queensland locality Eastern is the nice brown striping. But yeah, if I had a choice between keeping them indoors and keeping them outdoors, I'd definitely keep them outdoors because you can provide them with this extra space so they can not go back and forth in a tiny enclosure. They've got this massive, spacious pit. And it's a lot better for them. A lot more enrichment in regards to the UV and the heat, natural heat, instead of having a heat bulb and UVB bulb. And I've noticed with the blue tongue, she got a lot bigger than what she would have been inside. Obviously they get the fat, but they don't get the length. So, yeah. Amazing animals to keep blue tongues. If you guys want more info on like feeding and cohabbing, because I've kept these three together for as long as they've been with me, and I've never had an issue. Hello. Even with the uh, Beano, never had a problem with him outdoors 24-7, besides him rubbing his nose up against the timber, which he then went inside for a bit. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to set up blue tongues outdoors. Also, rubber surrounding so they can't get out if you want more info on the enclosure itself i've got several videos out already and we've also got this enclosure as well i keep talking about it a lot because i'm very proud of it there will be a monitor in here hopefully this year but then obviously got the other stuff in here but yeah so i hope you guys enjoy this video please make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you did if you want to see more please subscribe and I'll talk to you all later.